All right, let's take a look at a new set of questions. Jose said he did one half of his project yesterday and one fourth of his project today. So he has done two sixths of his project. So this is what he said. He said he did one half plus one fourth, and he says that he did then one sixth of his project. You see what he's doing, don't you? Okay. Oh, two sixths. I'm sorry, he said two sixths of his project. I'm sorry, I didn't really hear him. Okay, so he did two sixths of his project. You see where he's, what he's doing, what he's trying to do. He's going 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 4 is 6. Let's see if that works out. Okay, so I'm going to take the 1 half. You know, here, see, look, they're back. Okay. So we have 1 half plus 1 fourth, and we're going to see if that equals 2 six. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so. Not even close. So he's wrong. All right, so... Let's talk about why he's wrong. But before we do that, let's just take a look at some of the next problems so we can understand this a little better. Okay? I, I, I can't, I really can't stop dropping these. It's okay, bud. All right. So the first problem is one fourth plus one fourth equals two fourths. Two six plus three six equals 5, 6. And we want to answer these two or false. And the next one, so this is number 1. This is number 2. Let's put number 3 up. Number 3 says 2 fifths plus 3 tenths equals 7 tenths. All right. So we're trying to see if 1 fourth plus 1 fourth equals 2 fourths. So let's take a look. Let's bring this 1 fourth over, this other 1 fourth over. So there's your 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. We have to know if it's equal to, we have to find out if it's equal to 2 fourths. Now look, when I say 1 fourth, I'm talking about something this size. So here's 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, and we want to know if it's equal to 2 fourths. Well, that's obviously true, because we just brought the same amount over. So that's obviously true. So that's true. Let's take a look at this one. 2 six plus 3 six equals 5 six. So let's take 2 six. Oh, we're going to have a problem with that one, aren't we? I'm going to run out of six. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for this one. So I don't have two sets. I, I can do this. That's okay. Two six. There's two six. There's your three six. And that's supposed to equal five six. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to just mark it off. That's the length of them. And now I'm going to see if it's equal to... Five, six. Well, that's almost kind of silly because look, you notice it is. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's your two, six plus three, six equals five, six. So that's true. Notice why that's true. These are like terms you're adding. You're adding two, six, two of these pieces. So I have two, six plus three, six. That has to be five, six because these pieces are six. So that's obviously true also. What about this guy? Two fifths? Plus three tenths. Do I have tenths? I do. Plus three tenths. And that's supposed to be equal to seven tenths. So you ready? Let's put this down before I drop that too. All right, so let's see if that's equal to seven tenths. And let's see how many we can drop. If you can count how many I dropped during one class period, that'd be cool. All right. You'll learn how to count to a very high number. Okay. One, two, three. Four, I'm coming. Five, six, seven. I'm thinking that's a yes. Okay, so that's also true. <coughs> so all of these are true. Now, again, the reason these are true are really obvious. The reason these are true is because if I have the same denominator, that means it's the same size piece. They're like terms. Just like when we talked about before with like terms, that we can add and subtract like terms, that's the same thing we do with addition and subtraction of fraction. If they're the same size, it's easy to add and subtract them. It's when they're different sizes that you have a problem. Okay? But when they're the same size, they are like terms. So let's take a look at these next set of problems and see if we can answer them. It says, combine and express your answer in simplest form. Use the manipulatives to verify your answer. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Can I do this without dropping it? I'm just going to take it off this side. Ah. All right. 
says 3 eighths plus 2 eighths. Let's take a stab at, in the dark with this. 3 eighths plus 2 eighths. But I want you to really visualize this. Don't just, oh, I'm going to memorize it, visualize it. Okay, so we have 3 eighths plus 2 eighths. Remember, eighths are the same size pieces. Eighths are these little pieces that are the same size pieces. Pieces, not pizzas. We don't want pizza. Okay, if we have three of these pieces plus two more of these pieces, what do we have? We have five eighths. Okay, and I can verify this, but it, it makes sense, right? Three eighths plus two eighths is five eighths. If I take three of them over and two of them over, that means I have five of them. Okay, so let's look at this one. Three fourths minus one fourth. Well, let's think about this. If I have three fourths, if I have three of these pieces, three of them, three fourths, these are called fourths pieces, three fourths, and I take away one of them, how many do I have? Well, I have two fourths. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. This next one says 7 tenths plus 2 tenths. No manipulatives. I think we can do it. 7 tenths plus 2 tenths. If I have 7 of the little pieces plus 2 more of the little pieces, what do I have? I have 9 of the little pieces. 9 tenths. So what is that telling me? That's telling me, remember this was 5 eighths. That's telling me if my denominators are the same, all I have to do is combine the numerators, keep the denominator. 3 plus 2 is 5. Keep the denominator 8. Because the denominator is the like term. So remember that? Keep Combine the top, keep the like term. 3 minus 1 is 2, keep the like term with a 4, the denominator. 7 plus 2 is 9, keep the like term with a 10. That's all we're doing. Same thing if we have negative and positives. If I have 8 tenths minus, and this is not, this is not in your notes, but just watch, 8 tenths minus 12 tenths. Think of the negative as being with the numerator, it's easier. So this to me reads, I have 8 tenths, but I owe you 12 tenths. If I have 8 tenths, but I owe you 12 tenths, then I owe you 4 tenths. And then, of course, we can reduce that fraction. Okay, so it's that simple. All right, let's take a look at these examples. Number one, 5 ninths minus 7 ninths. Again, check your denominator. If they're the same, it's an easy, it's an easy thing. All right, I have 5, I owe 7. Think of this as being a numerator. It's the easiest way to do it. I have 5, I owe you 7, so I owe you 2 keep the denominator. I owe you two ninths. I have five ninths. Think about ninths, those little pieces. I have five of them. I owe you seven of them. Now I owe you two of them. Okay, two ninths. All right, number two. Five thirteenths minus a minus. I think that's two thirteenths. Okay, let me fix that. Two thirteenths minus a minus five thirteenths. Uh-oh, uh, rash, rash, double sign. No double signs. Absolutely no double signs. These two signs become one. The signs are the same, so become a positive. So now I have this. Awesome. Check for an LCD. Check for the LCD's least common denominator. So, but for now, we're going to check for a common denominator, and we have one. Okay, so all I have to do is worry about the numerators. I have two, I have five, I have seven, thirteens. Remember, the denominator stays the same. Think about why. When you do these problems, don't just do them arbitrarily. Think about why you're getting those denominators. Okay, think about this minus sign always being with the top number. So I owe you 3xy, I owe you 7, so now I owe you 10xy on the bottom. Negative 10 over xy. Okay, so what we're looking at is if we have the same denominator, we're just dealing with the numerator. If we have minus signs in there, I would think of the minus or the negative sign being with the numerator. Remember, a negative is the same thing as a minus, so it does not matter. Okay, let's do 4 and 5. These are great, right? As long as the numerators match, we're good because we have like terms. Like terms are easy. It's when we don't have like terms that we have a new problem. All right, let's look so far. 4, 4 is 13a minus 5. Oh, sorry, 13a over 14 minus 5a over 14. Let me get 5 down. 8x over 9 minus 3 ninths. Okay, here we go. Look for a common denominator, and we have it. So now we have to just deal with the numerators. Remember, this is a positive. I have 13, but I owe you 5. So I have 8 
A, I have 13 A's, I owe you 5 A's, I have 8 A's. All over 14. But remember, try to reduce if you can, and I can reduce that. Okay? 2 goes into both of these. 2 goes into 8 4 times. 2 goes into 14 7 times. So that's 4A over 7. Let's look at this. 8x. I have 8x's, but I owe you 3. I don't owe you 3x's. I owe you 3. I can't combine them because they're not like terms. So the best we can do is they have the same denominator. We keep the denominator, and we get 8x minus 3. That's the best I can do. They're not like terms. Now, be careful. Here's where everybody screws up. Do not reduce here. Because this is a term. Remember, we can only reduce factors. Do not reduce here. Do not reduce there. Be very careful. Be very, very careful. OK. Now, too easy, right? Let's try this. 2 thirds plus 1 fourth. We already showed you that the only way we can add fractions is if they have the same denominator. Well. These don't. So we have to find a way to get them to have the same denominator. Well, in order for them to have the same denominator, we need to build them so they'll have the same denominator. If we build them, we multiply them by some number to, to be an equivalent fraction. Now, here's the deal. First, we've got to figure out what that number is going to be. So I want to talk about the least common denominator. I want to do this a little different than you've ever probably seen it done, to be quite honest. Least common denominator. Now, personally, personally, I think my way's better. But I think my way's better because it's my way. Okay? Here's the deal. I also think my way's better because I'm a minimalist. I don't like I don't like to have to do a lot of stuff. My brain's not that big. Okay? So here's what I do. I take two thirds and I take one fourth, and I have to find a common denominator. We're building these fractions. Think about this. That's what we're doing when we're getting a common denominator. Even though it's the least common denominator, we're building the fractions, always building. So think about making them bigger. We want to make 2 thirds bigger. I don't mean bigger in size. I want it to look like the denominator is bigger. So I'm going to use a denominator bigger than 3. I'm going to use a denominator bigger than 4. Okay? However, or at least as big as 4. If 3 goes into 4, 4 might work. Okay? But my denominator will not be smaller. My denominator will not be smaller than either one of these numbers because we're building the fraction. So here's what I do to find a common denominator. Are, are you ready? And we call this the least common denominator, or LCD, least common denominator. Here's what I do. I take the biggest number, the biggest denominator, and take multiples of that number. That's the multiplication, multiplication table. So I'm going to do this step by step. Here's what I do first. I say to myself, self, does the small number divide into the big number nicely without a remainder? That answer is no. So then I start taking multiples. 4 times 1 is 4. We know that doesn't work. 4 times 2 is 8. Does 3 go into 8 without a remainder? Nope. 4 times 3 is 12. Does 3 go into 12 without a remainder? Yep. So that's the LCD. Now, I could keep going and I can get another LCD. I can get another common denominator. For instance, I can go to 24, and they both go into 24, but I don't want that because that's a bigger number. It's too big. It takes, I'll have to reduce too much. Least common denominator means the first one you can get to, okay? So the LCD is 12 here, okay? So that's why I know how to find the LCD. I'm going to come back to this problem, but for now, I want to practice getting the LCD. So here the LCD is 12. Let's do another one, okay? We're going to do 3 fifths and 5 tenths. And the steps are, are in your workbook. OK, that's an and. That's not a plus. OK, if, if you need me to write it down, I will. First thing you do is look at the biggest number. Does 5 divide into 10, 3 fifths, and 7 tenths? Sorry, I believe this is 7 tenths. Sorry about that. OK, now look, when you do this, you're not looking at the numerators. You're only looking at the denominators, least common denominator. Okay? And when you get a least common denominator, you need at least two fractions. You can't get the least common denominator of one fraction because there's nothing, you're not sharing anything. Okay? You look at the first number, I mean the biggest number, and you ask yourself this question. Does the little number divide into the bigger number without a remainder? That answer is yes. If the answer is yes, that is the least common denominator. So your least common denominator here is 10. You're done. Okay? Let's try the next one.
1 fourth and 5 sixths. Okay, again, I look at the bigger number. Does 4 divide into 6 without a remainder? And the answer is no. So I start taking the multiples of 6, counting by 6. 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3. So 6 times 1 is 6, it doesn't work. 6 times 2 is 12. Does 4 go into 12? The answer is yes. So the LCD is 12. That's how you can get the least common denominator. It's really kind of simple that way. Some people break all their things into primes and get, oh, yeah, I don't like that. I mean, you can do that, but it just takes forever. Okay? All right, so let's do a problem from start to finish. Here we go. It's really very simple. Let's go back to 2 thirds plus 1 fourth. And I'm going to do that problem from scratch. Talking through the steps, even though this is in your workbook. Okay. Step one is to find the LCD if you don't have one. So I look at the number 4. 3 does not go into 4, so it's not 4. Then I take multiples of 4. 3 doesn't go into 8, so it's not 8. 12. 3 does go into 12. We knew it was 12. We did this before. That's okay. Oh, I'm, I'm going to show you something. I know a lot of you used to like to do addition of fractions like this when you were in like the younger grades, up and down. Don't do regular fractions like that, and you'll see why when we get into algebra fractions. Okay. So here we go, we're going to do these horizontally. We want both of these fractions to have the common denominator 12. I'm going to rewrite these just so you can see where I started. I started with this. Okay, I want both of these fractions to have a common denominator of 12. So the first thing I do is get a common denominator. The second thing I do is build my fractions to have that denominator. So remember I'm building. Okay, so to build your fraction, I have to say to myself, self, there I go again, talking to myself. What do I have to multiply 3 by to get to 12? Well, that is 4. That has nothing to do with this. Don't even worry about this. But whatever I do to the bottom, i got to do to the top, because I have to multiply the whole fraction by 1, 1, 1. Let's come back. 1, 1. Don't forget the 1. Okay, don't forget the 1. Okay, have to multiply by 1. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 twelfths is the same thing as 2 thirds. Looks different. But it's the same thing. If I have to break out the magnets, I will. All right, here we go. Now, 4, I want fourths to be 12s. So I'm going to multiply by 3 to get 12. But if I multiply the bottom by 3, I'll multiply the top by 3. And now I have a common denominator. That's what I wanted to do. And now remember, I keep the denominator and combine the numerators. 8 plus 3 is 11. And now I reduce if I can. Unfortunately, I can't, so I'm done. So those are the steps. All right, so let's take a look at this question. First thing you want to know is, that, does it have an LCD? It does not have a common denominator, so I have to find one. So I take the biggest number, which is 12, and I say to myself, self, it's important to talk to yourself, does 6 divide into 12 evenly? And the answer is, yes, it does. So the LCD is 12. So that's the first step. Second step is now to build these fractions so they all have a denominator of 12. So the first step is to an LCD, the second step is to build. Okay, now, here we go. This already has a denominator of 12, so I can leave them alone. Hey, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Okay, this does not have a denominator of 12. I'm going to erase this just because it's in my way. So now, I'm going to make sure it does. I'm going to make it have a denominator of 12, so I'm going to build the fraction. I have to multiply 6 by 2 to get 12. So I have to multiply 5 by 2, because remember, the only thing we're allowed to do is multiply a fraction by 1, some form of 1, and we get 10 twelfths. Okay, now we just combine. Remember, the denominator stays the denominator, and the easiest way to deal with this is to think of this negative or minus being in the numerator. So I have 1, I owe 10, have 1, owe 10, so I owe 9. That's step 3. And yes, it's okay to put that negative somewhere else, unless it's like over here. I mean, put it anywhere, top, bottom, middle, doesn't matter. Okay, now we're almost done. We have to make sure this is reduced. We look at 9 and 12, and we have to see if they have a factor in common, and they do. 3 divides into both of those, so we divide by 3. The fraction's still negative. Don't let the negative haunt you. Just bring it down. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So the answer to this problem is negative 3 fourths, and that was, like, fun. Okay, so why don't, I'll tell you what. I'll, no, I'll do these with you. The numbers are pretty... I'll, well, you try to get an LCD for the first one. See how you do.
Well, I'm thinking right here. I have a rash right there. Double sign. Sign, sign, absolutely no good. So 9 sixteenths, the signs are different. That's going to give me a minus. Don't, don't use those double signs. 5 twelfths. Now I'm going to take, first I'm going to see if 12 would divide into 16 without a remainder, and it does not. So now I need multiples of 16. Wow, awesome. Okay, 16. 32 is 16 times 2. 12 does not go into 32. Next one is 48. All you have to do is add 16 to this, and you get 48. And 12 does go into 48, but you did have to know that. Okay, so now 48's my new denominator, my new LCD. So why am I writing 12? It's okay. I'm fixing it. Okay, so 48's my, my LCD. And now I have to multiply to get 48. All right, so that's my LCD. That's my step one. Here comes my step two. 16 times 3 is 48. Why do I know that? I, I, I think because I've just been doing this for 100 years. Okay, but 16 times 3 is 48. 9 times 3 is 27. 12 times 4 is 48. So 5 times 4 is 20. All right, now we just keep the denominator. 27 minus 20. I have 27. I owe 20 if you rather talk that way. And we get 7. So the answer is 7 48ths. Okay? How'd that go? Did that go good? I thought that was good. All right. Double sign. Don't forget. No sign, sign. No sign, sign here. We're clear for takeoff. Okay. Look for an LCD. No LCD. So now we need to find one. We look at the biggest number. We have to find out if 3 goes into 5 without a remainder, and it does not. So now we have to take multiples of 5. 5, we said, was no good. 10, 3 does not go into 10, no good. 15, we found the w winner. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so the LCD is 15. So now we want to make, we want to build a fraction, so they both have 15 as a common denominator. So we have to multiply this by 5. Well, then we'll multiply this by 5. Now, we know how to do this. We did this, I don't remember when again, ago, but we did it. Okay, remember this is just 5 times 2, which is 10. 10a. Not penne, that's like macaroni. Okay, and here we need this to be 15. So you multiply this by 3. And this is a times 3, or just 3a. So now we have the same denominator, so we, that's 15 in our answer. I have 10a's. I owe you 3As. They are like terms. I have 10As. I owe you 3As, because remember, think of this as being an enumerator. So I have 10As, owe you 3As, so I have 7As. So it's 7A over 15. Okay, let's try another one, just to make sure you got it. Again, don't forget, whatever you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. A lot of people take care of the denominator, but never take care of that numerator. He will get very ticked off if you don't take care of him as well, because then you no longer have a common, you no longer have a equivalent fraction if you only multiply the bottom. So then when I pull out my little fraction pieces, which you'll know I'll have to do, um, they won't be the same. That will be bad. Here we go. 5, 6 minus x over 2. What you might want to do is you might want to do that. That might help a little. I don't know. First thing you want to do is you want to see if 2 divides into the bigger one without a remainder, and it does. So my LCD is 6, so that's my first step. Now, everybody needs a common denominator of 6. Now we're going to build the fraction if we can. Okay, the first fraction, shouldn't have said if we can, because we can. That's why we're using it. Okay, first fraction already has 6 as its denominator, so we just use it. Second fraction, 2 times 3 is 6. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by 3, so I get 3x. Now here's the problem. I have a 5 minus a 3x. They are not like terms. Cannot combine them. The best I can do is make them sit together all over 6. Do not reduce because these are terms. There's a minus there. So you're done with that problem. All right, that's pretty cool. All right, looking at the, I'm going to keep this up for a minute, because looking at this next problem, let's talk about how these problems are all different, okay? This is 7 over y plus 2 thirds, and if I have to move that later, I will, but I just want to talk about how they're different. 4 over a minus 8 over 5, because obviously I'm not going to be able to fit work here. Okay. In this problem, 
the variable's in a numerator. In these problems, the variable's in the denominator, so it's a little different. Okay, when you have a variable, only one variable, only one variable in a denominator, and there's no variable here when it's only in one denominator. When the variable's only in one denominator, all you're going to do to get the LCD is multiply. 3y will you be your LCD, and I'll show you why in a minute. So that's step one. 3y is your LCD. So we need them both to have 3y as an LCD, as a denominator. And I'm going to write that in a minute to do it. But now let's see what's missing, OK? What do we have to multiply the y by to make it look like 3y? Because that's how we're going to have to build it, OK? Well, what's missing here is a 3 because 3 times y is 3y. I actually call this step missing over missing. You'll hear me saying that. The missing factor here is a 3. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top, and you get 21 over 3y. If I reduce this, I get this, 7 over y. Here, what's missing from the 3 to make it 3y is a y. So that's 2y. Now, combining, keep the denominator. These are not like terms. 21 plus 2y is just 21 plus 2y. And you're done. Do not reduce. That's a term. Attached by a plus, not a multiplication sign, not a factor. It's not a factor. OK? So for a second, see if you can get the LCD of this next one. 4 over a minus 8 fifths. This is actually number 2. OK, this next one is just like that one. We have a variable only in one denominator. So all we're going to do is multiply. So the LCD is 5A. That's step one. We want them both to have a denominator of 5A. OK, now remember, whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So we're going to multiply the bottom by 5. We're going to multiply the top by 5. And that's 20 over 5a. And, and don't reduce. Somebody, somebody once said, well, why don't we reduce here? Well, you know what's going to happen if we reduce? You get right back here. That's Building and reducing in the opposite operations, don't, don't, go, but don't go doing that. One's multiplication, one's division. We want them to have the same denominator. Here what's missing is an a. So we multiply by a, and we get 8a. And now we have 20 minus 8a, not like terms. 20 minus 8a all over 5a, keep the denominator. Do not reduce. That's a term, OK? And you are done. So that's how you add and subtract fractions. But let's see what happens when you have a lot of words involved. All right, let's take a look at this word problem. Sometimes it's hard to figure out if you can add, subtract, multiply, divide. So I'll tell you what my sister does. My sister just calls me up and says, do this problem, please. OK, I'm going to tell you a little story. This is a really funny story. My sister was running, running track one year when we were in high school. Obviously, that was eons ago. I think I ran it on a with a dinosaur. But at any rate, OK, she was running track. And her track teacher said to her track coach said, I need you to run two miles. So she came up to me and said, listen, I have to ask you something. The track is a one quarter mile long. How many times do I have to go around to make two miles? Now, I want to talk to you about this. This is not what I told my sister, but I want to talk to you about this. Look, the track is one quarter long, OK? So how many, now remember. This is my one. So think of this as one mile. How many quarters, so how many times do you have to go around to make one mile? Oops, sorry. That would be mm, four. So then how many times do you have to go around to make two miles? That would be eight. But I realized my sister had no idea. So I said, you have to go around 22 times. So there she is running and running, and the whole track team's done, and there she goes. <laughs> it was funny. i sorry, I just had to share that with you. Okay. Anyway. All right. So it's important to know fractions, because you may have somebody who does understand fractions, and they're going to screw you up, just because they feel like it. All right. So let's look at this question. The question said, Mr. Miser, Mr. Miser, that's cool, huh? Mr. Miser began his trip. The gas, the gas gauge read one, five-eighths, I'm sorry, five-eighths full. So there's his gas gauge right now. That's how full it is, 5 eighths full. Okay, when he returned from the trip, 
it read one third full. So, so that's how full it is now. Okay? So obviously he used this much gas, correct? So we want to know what is the difference between this and this, because whatever this difference is, that's what's what we have left. So that's what he used up. I'm sorry, we know what we have left. That's what he used up on his trip. So we want the difference between the blue and the orange. So we want the difference between 5 eighths and 1 third, which means we're going to subtract. So we're going to take 5 eighths minus 1 third. Okay? To do that, we obviously need a common denominator. The common denominator, let's see what it is. It's not 8 because 3 does not go into 8 without a remainder. We have to take multiples of 8. 8, 16, 3 does not go into 16. Next multiple of 8 is 24. 3 does go into 24, so 24 is the LCD. So that's step 1. Step 2 is forming these equivalent fractions. You have to say to yourself, self, what do you multiply 8 by to get 24? And the answer is 3. Whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom, so you get 15 24 Here, 3 times what number is 24? And that number is 8. Whatever you do to the bottom, you got to do to the top, so that is 8 24 Now I have 15 24 and I subtract 8 24 so I get 15 minus 8, 7 24 now, if I had little 24 pieces, I could take seven of them and put them here, and that would give me the rest of that piece to add up to the whole thing. I, I don't have that, so sorry. I know you're thinking a good thing. All right, so that's seven 24 But think about the question. I have five eights. I had five eights to begin with, but then I drove, and now I only have one third left, so I have to subtract that to see the difference. That's how much I used, seven 24 Okay. Let's take a look at this next problem. This next problem I think is easier. Carol bought one, t one half of a pound of cashews. Uh, I like cashews, but cashews are really expensive. You gone to the store and bought cashews? They're like ridiculous. Have you ever noticed the things that are worse for you actually cost the, the, the least? Which means they really want us to be sick. Okay, so one half of a pound of cashews, two thirds of a pound of walnuts, three fourths of a pound of peanuts. I'm not really a big fan of peanuts. Okay. Find the total weight of the nuts that she bought. So she wants the total of everything she bought. That means we're going to add these. Oh, so much fun. So we're going to add one, one half plus two thirds plus three fourths. Well, now we need a common denominator for all three of them. I'm going to leave some room here so I can write. Okay, we're going to start with the biggest number, which is four. Two goes into four, but three does not, so four is not the LCD. So we have four, we're going to go to eight, take multiples of four. Two is okay with eight, but three, uh-uh. Then we're going to go to 12. Well, four goes into 12, obviously, three goes into 12, two goes into 12. They all go into 12, so the LCD is 12. That's step one. Step two. We're going to get them all to be 12s. Okay. So you have to say to yourself, self, what do I have to multiply the 2 by to get to 12? And that's 6. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 6 times 1 is 6. Remember why we're multiplying by a form of 1. What do I have to multiply the 3 by to get to 12? That's 4. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. That's 8 12s. Annoying yet? It should be very annoying. I'm trying for annoying. If I'm not there yet, don't worry. I'll be there in a second. Okay. Four times what number is 12? That's three. Whatever I do the bottom, I do the top. So that's nine twelfths. So six plus eight plus nine. That's six plus eight is 14. Plus nine is 23 twelfths. And that is reduced. Now I have to accept that answer. But I'm going to tell you, I don't know too many places that you could go into and say, I want 23 twelfths of a pound, okay, or 23 twelfths pounds of this. So just because we're talking peanuts and cashews, you might want to change this. Though this is fine, you might want to change this to a mixed number. Let's see if we remember how to do that. So I'm going to do that over here. Just because of the nature of the problem, you never say I want 23 twelfths pounds of something. 
you tell them exactly how many pounds. So let's look at 23 twelfths. Remember how to do it. You divide, because a fraction line is really division. 12 goes into 23 actually only once. I subtract 12, and I get 11. So you remember how this works? Here we go. We go 1, remainder is 11, and the 11 goes over the 12. So it's 1 and 11 twelfths pounds. OBS is pounds. Okay, so that's the total pounds of nuts she bought. Okay, ready for one more? The wrestlers out there always have to lose weight to make weight, right? I've never heard a wrestler say I have to gain weight, but maybe they do, I don't know. All right, here we go. It says, Fred had to lose seven-eighths of a pound to qualify for his re wrestling match. He died and lost seven-tenths of a pound. How much more does he have to lose? Okay. So he had to lose seven-eighths of a pound. Seven-eighths. But he lost only seven-tenths of a pound. We want to know how much more does he have to lose. Well, I have to subtract. He already lost this. He had to lose a total of seven-eighths. But he lost this. So I'll take away this because he lost this. And we'll find out how much more he has less to lose, left to lose. Okay, so let's get a common denominator. We'll start with 10. 8 does not divide into 10, so it's not 10. 20. 8 does not divide into 20, so it's not 20. 30. It's okay, I'll be there for dinner soon. 8 does not go into 30, so it's not 30. 40. 8 goes into 40. So the LCD is 40. That's step one. And remember, these steps are all in your notes. Okay. Now look, some people said they wanted to use 80. They would work. 8 goes in 80 and 10 goes in 80. But that's not the least common denominator. It is a common denominator. It's just not the least common denominator. Okay. So let's do my building. 8 times what is 40? That's 5. 7 times 5 is 35. 10, 10 times 4 is 40. So I have to multiply by 4. 7 times 4 is 28. 35 minus 28 is 7. We get 7 fortieths. So that's how, many, that's how much of a pound he has to lose to make weight. Okay, so that's the end of adding and subtracting fractions. Next thing we're going to do is something called complex fractions. What complex fractions? Oh, that sounds interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm.